Katrina, we'll start. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel Meyer, the Executive Director of the Historic Ruskin Art Club. Uh, welcome to this evening's presentation, Ruskinian Resonances in Japanese Art and Culture. April has turned into um, Ruskin in Japan month for us at the Ruskin Art Club. Although he never visited Japan, the British art and social critic John Ruskin had an outsized influence on Japanese aesthetics and social initiatives at the end of the 19th century. And as we shall see, this influence continues today. For many people, this comes as something of a surprise, but thinking of Ruskin in purely Anglo-American terms uh, is a mistake. Ruskin's ideas found fertile soil in France, for example, with Proust and de la Cizeraine in India with Gandhi, who applied Ruskin's economic ideas to his projects for rural revival. And as we shall explore tonight, Japanese artists and intellectuals likewise found themes in Ruskin's work that served the articulation of their own values. Earlier this month, we laid something of a groundwork for with a rich uh, reflection from John Walker in Vienna and Professor uh, Kazuya Oyama in, in Kyoto on the early 19th century poet and artisan Otogaki Rengetsu. Tonight, we're delighted to welcome our friend, Professor Ikuku Kurosawa and the team at the Ruskin Morris Center in Osaka to trace the story of Ruskin's influence on Japanese culture in modern times and highlight that ongoing influence at the Osaka Ruskin Morris Center and all the activities that it sponsors. Uh, Ikuko Kurosawa is assistant professor at the College of Global Engagement at Kansai Gadai University and on the staff at the Ruskin and Morris Center in Osaka. She specializes in Japanese language education. Her research topic was learners' anxiety, specifically how learners process their anxiety in the classroom, and she's now training to be a counselor. She has been teaching Japanese mainly in Japan and North America, including Oberlin College, Pennsylvania State University, Greater Allegheny, and the Japan Foundation in Toronto, Canada. She was one of the volunteers at the symposium to commemorate Ruskin's bicentennial anniversary held in Kyoto in 2020. She was also a member of the editing team for the book Ruskin Festival, which maybe Kuko, you can you can raise for us now. Yeah, great. <laughs> for the uh, the book Ruskin Festival, which came out last year in 2022. Professor Kurosawa. Thank you very much, Mr. Maya. Hello, everyone from Osaka, <laughs> Japan. Uh, my name is Ikuko Kurosawa, and uh, thank you very much, Mr. Maya, for a kind introduction. And first of all, I'd like to express our sincere gratitude to Ruskin Art Club to give us this opportunity to talk about the Ruskin and Morris Center of Osaka to everyone like this. And thank you again, Mr. Meyer, and everyone from uh, Ruskin Art Club. Arigato gozaimasu. And for today's presentation, uh, I'll be mainly speaking, but I have two other members who prepared together for this presentation, uh, Mr. Shinji Kamba and Mr. Eiji Yoshida. And both of them are from Studio L Community Design Office. And uh, Shinji is the manager of the Osaka office. Kamba-san. <laughs> Did you say hello to everyone? Oh. <laughs> this is Shinji <laughs> and also Eiji Yoshida. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, Shinji is actually a manager of the Studio L Osaka office, and Eiji is a member. 
And both of them are, of course, uh, both of them are staff member of the Ruskin and Morris Center of Osaka. And also today we have special guest, <laughs> and I am very happy and it's our great pleasure to introduce Mr. Norio Tsuyuki, who is our uh, founder of this center. Tsuki-san, could you give some, could you give a word to everyone? Welcome to Natsukin, Natsukin the Morse Center of Osaka. I am Norio Tsuyuki, director. I am very old, 83 year old. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Tsuyuki. She said she is old, but when we go hike, he is the fastest to get the summit, so <laughs> we don't get the uh, we don't get that <laughs> old part all the time. Like we say, all oh, we always say, like you're young, you're young. So, <laughs> but um, I I also want to uh, mention that he is a companion uh, of the Guild of Saint George. And today, uh, I also have one more person who I wanted to introduce, Mr. Ryo Yamazaki. He's not here today, but he is the CEO of the uh, Studio L office. And our programs and events happening at our center is under his directions. So he's not here today with us, but I wanted to introduce him to you. And he's also a companion of the Guild of St. George. So today we are live streaming from our center, uh, Ruskin Center, and this library just renovated. This building is originally built in 1894-ish, <laughs> and we just renovated this past February, and uh, we just uh, brought the, all these books from the old center, and this is going to be our main library uh, for a while, I think. And um, okay, and today I am going to switch to my PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah. And this is what we did in the past February. It was really, really cold, but uh, a lot of us actually came in and did the renovation here. So today, uh, uh, sorry, uh, there are three things that I would like to uh, mention first before we start our program. So our official name is the Ruskin and Morris Center of Osaka, but it's it's quite it's a bit long to repeat so many times. So I may say Osaka Ruskin Center or Sen uh, Ruskin Center in Osaka, but I hope you don't mind. And also our topic today is Ruskinian Resonances in Japanese Art and Culture and the Ruskin Moore Center of Osaka. And when we talk, uh, when we say art, uh, we'd like to use it in more broad sense, not only in the meaning of big C culture, but also like a small C culture way of living or working style. So just wanted to mention that. And also uh, about myself, uh, as Mr. Maya said, my specialization is Japanese language education. I'm no expert on Ruskin. I'm, I just started <laughs> learning about Ruskin myself uh, when I met Mr. Yamazaki in 2018. So um, I will try my best to uh, explain uh, what I studied, but I, I apologize in advance <laughs> for my uh, shallow knowledge. Okay, so today's contents, uh, first we did the introdu introduction and we're gonna talk about Ruskinian resonances in Japanese arts and culture. And we will move on to the Ruskin festival, which is gonna be uh, reading discussion sessions uh, and the symposium of Ruskin Bicentennial Birth Anniversary and from now on, which means what we do at the center right now. And we're gonna show you a very short video clip, but it's beautiful video clip that AG made uh, at the end of the presentation. So 
The picture that we see on the slide is a scenery in Nose, where our center is located. Uh, Nose is a beautiful area located about one hour drive from downtown Osaka. It is in rich nature surrounded by mountains. And there are a few perspectives how Japan met Ruskin, and they are, of course, through arts and uh, aesthetics but also nature was one of the elements. Let's check the Japanese history as a background first and look at the Ruskinian resonances in Japan. Looking uh, at the historical background of Japan, about uh, 350 years of national isolation, Japan opened its borders to the outside world and Meiji frustration took place in 1868. The Meiji government was promoting enrich the country, strengthening the armed forces, which is fukoku kyohei in Japanese, and educational reform, kyoiku kaikaku. And gradually, however, the people looked for modernization on their own, according to Kimura, 1997. Modern Painters was translated in Japan in the 1920s and 30s as the shown in this chart. The Modern Painters was published in England from 1843 through 60, and it was translated and published in Japan around 1932 by Ryuzo Mikimoto, the founder of the Tokyo Ruskin, Ruskin Library, and English literature scholar Torajiro Sawamura. Uh, how modern painters was introduced uh, is divided uh, to this time period by uh, Masami Kimura by, uh, sorry, in 1980, uh, sorry, it was introduced in 1987. And the first introduction of modern painters uh, period that was introduced was a time when the beauty of Japanese landscape was in industriously demonstrated and Japanese mountaineering, especially in Japanese Alps, was established. And the second time period was the translation boom of Ruskin's representative works. It was in mid Taisho around this time. And the third was uh, that the time that comparison to Marx. So the interest in Ruskin social aspects grew in comparison to Marx, who started to be introduced around this time. And the next was the period of Ruskin fever in, in his early Showa before the World War II. And the Miki, uh, she's also a scholar. Uh, in 2021, she actually uh, divided into three time periods to observe how Ruskin received in Japan. And first uh, period was 1884 through 1895. And this time period has two characteristics. The first one was uh, Modern painters were read because of the interest in aesthetic, especially quotation of definition of the term beautiful and also definition of great uh, in art from modern painter was used a lot. And around that time in Japan, art, beauty, those basic concepts of philosophy of art in the process to be understood and Ruskin's art theory was used as a reference. Secondary as a country, Japan was under rapid modernization. Ruskin thought was considered as good medicine to give reflective view of modernization and westernization that Japan could not escape at that time. The second period was from 1896 through 1916. And the third period was 1970 through 1934. In Miki's research 2020, 
In a journal published in 1884, an anonymous Japanese writer mentioned Ruskin as art uh, educator, which is probably the earliest Japanese reference to his name in art-related literature. And afterwards, 1888, <clears throat> excuse me, journalist Soho Tokutomi introduced Ruskin according to Watanabe and Kikuchi, 1997. The to Soho Tokutomi was a powerful journalist as Miki 2020 and Kimura 1982 explained, when rapid modernization happened, Japanese, uh, Japanese encountered difficulties in understanding the context of Western philosophy and thoughts. Soho wrote uh, of, uh, sorry, Soho wrote digest of Ruskin's doctrine of political economy, and it was very lucid, enlightening, and broad, uh, according to Kimura 1982. Other introducers uh, of Ruskin are Kubo Tenzui, who wrote Sansui Dilong, Beauty, uh, Aesthetic Theory of Mountain and Water in 1900s, and he was a professor of Taihoku Imperial University. And uh, also, Shigetaka Shiga, uh, who was a geographer and critique and member of House of Representatives, his book, The Japanese Landscape, 1894, popularized the alpinism in Japan. Influenced by Shigetaka Shiga's The Japanese Landscape, as I, uh, that I just mentioned, Kojima Usui, Usui Kojima, uh, started uh, climbing more mountains, which led to write, uh, read, uh, which led him to write uh, his actually novel. Uh, Usui Kojima was born in Kagawa and went to Yokohama, and Yokohama is near Tokyo actually. And uh, his real work was actually a banker of Yokohama Shokin Ginko, Yokohama Specie Bank. But uh, he's also a very famous, uh, uh, sorry, he was an editor, uh, sorry, sorry, tribal writer and editor of the literature and uh, glacial landform researcher and also ukiyo-e researcher. He was uh, very fond of Hiroshige and this is Hiroshige's one of his work. Actually, I just wanted to show you. And uh, Kojima Usui met Walter Weston, who advised him to found the Japanese Alpine Club, and Kojima Usui became the first president of the Japanese Alpine Club. Shimazaki Toson and Natsume Soseki in the literature field, whom you can see in the, uh, in the slide, they, are, uh, they have a strong uh, influence from Ruskin's description of nature, especially the Toson. The novelist Soseki Natsume was a keen reader of Ruskin and he studied abroad England in 1900 through 1902. The year of 1900 was the year Ruskin passed and he quoted Ruskin's words in his novel, according to uh, Kumasaka, 1985. Tenshin Okakura is well known in the US, I'm sure, and in other worlds as well. He served as the head of the Department of Chinese and Japanese Arts at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, also published The Book of Tea in New York in 1906. In Sakabe's research, individualism, personality, mentality, and romanticism, subjective idealism, etc., which are tensions, key concepts, and closely connect together and shape the universe and microcosmos of his thoughts for sure. And his individualism certainly has implication of social philosophy. Individualism is based on our life, our living life. Because of this microcosmos, we respect unique individualism, and it is a standard for our value. In the bottom, 
there was compatible ideas with Ruskin. And Toru Iwamura, art critic, Western art historian and art journalist, attended who attended the National Academy of Design. Uh, his work, Bijutsu to Shakai, Arts and Society, introduced that how Morris was influenced by Ruskin and his original ideas and concepts uh, developed into art enterprise. And lastly, I'd like to talk about Ryuzo Mikimoto, of course, because he was one of the, uh, who was the one who laid the foundation of Ruskin research in Japan. With his collection and Ruskin library in Tokyo, we can uh, learn Ruskin's ideology in Japan. And after World War II, history of Ruskin studies in Japan lost the ties and this process of change of interest, Ruskin has been one aspect of the Japanese history of ideas in the 20th, 20th century as a whole, according to Kimura 1982. It could have been, it could have been import, importation and digestion or indigestion of Western thoughts. Though, through exhibitions and researchers between now and then, Ruskin's thoughts and ideas were passed on in Japan. In 1997, the ex exhibition of Ruskin in Japan, 19, uh, sorry, 1890 through 1940, Nature for Art, Art for Life, and also in, tw in 2000, John Ruskin, A Thinker's Vision through Mikimoto Ryuzo Collection, Centenary Exhibition were held. And beyond that, there is us, Osaka Ruskin Center. So Mr. Tsuyuki, who I just introduced earlier, founded this center, Osaka Ruskin Center. And I thought it was very unique because he's not an uh, affiliated researcher to any institution. Then why Mr. Tsuyuki founded this center? And how and now a lot of people started to get involved with us, but how did everything start? Everything started with one email from Mr. Tsuyuki to Mr. Yamadaki in a studio L in 2018. Mr. Tsuyuki has been researching on Ruskin and Morris and collected books regarding them. And he wanted to pass on to uh, pass on Ruskin's thoughts to young generation. And 2019 marked by centennial year of Ruskin's birth. And he and his peers wanted to hold a symposium to commemorate Ruskin's uh, 200th anniversary of his birth. So they asked Mr. Yamazaki to be the director. And how Mr. Tsuyuki got interested in Ruskin to begin with. Mr. Tsuyuki was involved with the financial management for the Tsuji Karunari Institute. And I think, uh, uh, by the way, Tsuji Karunari School is the largest coronary school in Japan. And I think it's uh, equivalent of CIA, the Coronary Institute of America, I think, in the States. Sorry if I'm mistaken, but. Uh, and uh, in financial management, of course, uh, socioeconomic conditions and situations of Japanese society needs to be taken into consideration. And he decided to study economics in university. So he applied and got admitted to the Department of Economics at Osaka Metropolitan University. Through one of his courses he met, Heita Kawakatsu, the current uh, governor of Shizuoka Prefecture. Shizuoka Prefecture is where Mount Fuji is located, actually. And uh, he's the governor there right now. And his, in his book, Japanese Civilization and Modern West, uh, Mr. Tsuyuki found Ruskin and became fascinated by his thoughts. In this book, there was a statement about Ruskin and Marx. And Mr. Tsuyuki found Ruskin's economics to be warm and thought it was just what he was looking for. 
The principal of Tsuji Culinary uh, School, Mr. Shizuo Tsuji, was collecting French culinary uh, classics. And Mr. Tsuyuki was taking care of the correspondence with uh, bookstores overseas. And he already knew many secondhand bookstores in London. And one antique bookshop owner sent him a copy of Ruskin's complete works, which he believed was in a manor house. That is when started his uh, collection. Uh, that is when he started collecting books. And in 2006, uh, he founded the Ruskin Morris Center of Osaka. So Mr. Tsuyuki contacted Mr. Yamazaki to start uh, planning for the uh, uh, symposium. And but who is Mr. Yamazaki and what is Studio L? The Studio L is his company. Oh, by the way, this is uh, Tsuyuki san's collection <laughs> at our center. Okay. And the letter L in the name of the company Studio L is the first letter uh, of life from Ruskin's phrase, there is no wealth but life. Ruskin's thoughts influenced the operation at Studio L, and they are based on the model of guild uh, from the medieval era. Community design was influenced by Ruskin's early and later life. Later life. Ruskin was art critique until he was about 40 years old. He praised Turner's artwork in his writing and he established himself as an art critic in the art world. Morris was one of those influenced by Ruskin and his friends and peers developed this into arts and crafts movement. Here. And this was brought to Germany and the United States and led to the foundation of the Bauhaus and eventually to a modern design. You can see the influence of this flow in today's design, including community design. Designing public facilities requires input from local people. It should not be designed only by staff from city hall and by designers. Studio L organizes workshops with local people, and that is what community design is. In earlier times when Studio L, L was founded around 2005, they were repeatedly holding design workshops for public facilities, but they gradually started receiving requests to give workshops from the field of social welfare and social education which work on the local issues with familiar with similar ideas to community design. And furthermore, this stemmed from the same sources as the one once called charity uh, organization societies or settlement movement. Furthermore, this stemmed from the same sources as one of the, oh, sorry, sorry, oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah, and furthermore, this stemmed from the same sources as once we call charity uh, organization societies or settlement movement in England, and both were influenced by Ruskin as a social reformer. And now I want to talk about how planning for the symposium started. So Mr. Tsuyuki, uh, oh, sorry, when the planning of Ruskin Symposium started, there are of course Mr. Tsuyuki and three other people and one school behind it. And three people are uh, Mr. Shoka Nishikawa from Kyoto UNESCO Association and Ms. Toshiko Asai from Kyoto Impact Hub and Mr. Shoji Sato. And Ito in school has a flow from Ruskin, Morris, and Bernard Leach, uh, Kanjiro Kawaii. They are 
uh, uh, arts and crafts movement uh, practitioners and uh, Itto and school has the flow from them. And in order to give opportunity for young people to be exposed to Ruskin's idea, we wanted to have not just one time symposium. So we decided to have seven reading discussion session and a symposium with six speakers from the reading dis uh, from the reading discussion sessions. There are the speakers, Mr. Ryo Yamazaki, Ms. Chiaki Yokoyama, Ms. Nobuko Shimuta, Mr. Shigeki Hattori, and Ms. Mr. Masayuki Sasaki, and Naoko Tosa. And these are the topics and themes that uh, for the reading discussion session. Uh, we decided to uh, apply ABD, uh, which is a uh, active book dialogue as a uh, proceed uh, reading discussion session. And we select a book and uh, read it in parts and share what you read and what you thought and deepen the understanding of the book. In the first reading discussion session, we had Mr. Yamazaki, and we did we read this uh, his book, The Origin of Community Design. And this one. The book draw Ruskin as a starting point and organizes the influence that community design received has received from British thinkers. As an art critic, Ruskin wrote the public a pub, and published a book on excellence on Turner's paintings in modern painters, as we all know. And later he became interested in architecture as well. He inherited an estate from his father and uh, a wine merchant to fund social welfare programs, one of which was Octavia Hill and Henrietta Barnett, who was called Hill's right hand, and expanding her activity from housing management to town planning, creating garden suburbs. A similar term is garden city, but strictly speaking, they are different. Garden city is a place where you can work and live, and Garden Suburb is a suburb where you can live comfortably and you commute to the city and work in the city. <clears throat> we at the center also had dialogue with the theme focusing on working and living styles in Nose region, and uh, we will show you the photo from the event uh, show, uh, show you later, but the uh, last few years, we have met young generation who moved to Nose as a place where they can seek for their own lifestyle. On the day two was with Professor Yokoyama, uh, Chiaki Yoko, Yokoyama, sorry, from University of Keo. And we read John Rus, ah, sorry, we read John Ruskin, uh, The Working Class Education and Ruskin. So this one and this one. Uh, this book is a translation of this uh, original book. In this session, we read, we read her book. And after reading, we pretended to be Ruskin by talking like him and using our body and drawing. And uh, we exchanged our thoughts in the world of Ruskin. After explaining how pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood was capturing objects with their style and in their own ways, she continued how it, it's important to be able to see the truth. For example, things had no outline but outline was visible in the contrast between the solids and the background. And this episode actually, this point uh, remind me of my art class in the elementary school. I was trying to 
<laughs> draw outline first and try to put shadows, but I was, I guess, wrong <laughs> based on Ruskin's idea. <laughs> oh, sorry. And uh, Professor uh, Yokoyama also explained uh, the art as technology and first understand that truth has bright and dark parts and uh, be able to uh, express this is a true beauty. And second, see the surroundings and find beautiful things in the, in, in the environment. And she also explained artisan, artificer, and artist, the basis of those words is connected and synonyms with people who create things using art as a creative technology. So everything in our lives is a creative activity and it is really important for us to review how much we enjoy the process. When I was going through and making this presentation, I almost forgot how to en enjoy making the presentation and I should really enjoy, <laughs> I thought, the process of connecting to you and the creative about you know what, what Ruskin uh, connected us like this. On day three, the speaker of the day three was Miss, Miss Nobuko Shimuta, and uh, we read Civic Economy in Japan. In her talk, she explained how uh, we are using, sorry, freeing design from consumption and passive, uh, I'm sorry, are freeing ourselves from the consumption, we can choose to have the active enjoyment and through civic activity or communi uh, community design. I should actually explain this one um, as well, but uh, this book is actually uh, research of, uh, sorry, result of her research and uh, it has a lot of possibility of small practices. So enjoyment, which is driving force of the civic economy, is similar to the idea of the beauty and enjoyment pursued by Ruskin and Morris. We can leave money, business, and thoughts to the next generation, but we can also pass on the way of living. Day four was uh, with Miss, uh, Mr. Shigeki Hattori from a company called Graph. Graph is a company that provides creative activities by six people right after the burst of the bubble economy in Japan. Members are from different fields, carpenter, furniture maker, product designer, filmmaker, and chef. They chose, uh, they choose how they want to be, including the environment where uh, they mark and sell their products and even their own organizational structure. After the war, Japan was enriching people's lives by making and selling huge number of products but having a lot of products around and how do we get people to handle products with care? So Graf made a theme of craftsmanship to create a different flow. People meets people each other and then experience will be produced. And for the experience, you will create the product. In this internet age, consumer lost their eyes and they just buy products because it has very cheap price. When we don't have things that we are looking for, we we'll still can accommodate with something else. What do we really need? We need to know what we need and choose them from the scratch. In this session, there was a topic about arts and crafts movements as well as minge, uh, Japanese arts and crafts movement. Minge is abbreviated term of minshu teki koge, and according to the Nihon Minge Kyokai, the Japan uh, Japanese 
Arts and Crafts uh, move, uh, Japanese Arts and Craft Association website, the word was coined by philosopher Muneyoshi Yanagi and potter Shoji Hamada and Kanjiro Kawai, who had the same perception on beauty. The daily products produced by craftsmen have beauty that equals to artworks, and you can find beauty in our life, in our daily life. Minge asks if product has beauty as well as health. Skoyakasa. And skoyakasa in Japanese, uh, it's byoki o shinai, don't get sick. And also karada ga jobu, which is strong, uh, have a strong physical uh, body. And it is kind of uh, difficult to translate, but Mr. Hattori said Minge is not just uh, an anti thesis but wisdom. Uh, he uses an example of long life design. No matter how many years have passed, we define it as a long life design and consider how to use the tools according to the change in the time. So even the time changes, skoyaka naru mono, uh, the things with health, has the way uh, to be suitable or useful uh, if I can be holding the translation for the time. So for example, like a fashion, we can buy cheap clothes, but then uh, you can just throw away uh, maybe like in a year or two, but you can actually buy a quality clothes and then maybe you can tailor uh, if your body does, uh, if the clothes doesn't fit, and you need the wisdom to tailor those clothes, or maybe you need a wisdom to take care of those clothes. So those uh, uh, wisdom, th that's called wisdom, right? So uh, the good design and uh, the things with uh, beauty and health, like you can, uh, you can use those, you can adapt those uh, according to the time, in accordance with the time. The next one is uh, Creative Village uh, with uh, Professor Masayuki Sasaki. And with Mr. Yamazaki, they gave a talk on Creative Village. They talked about intrinsic value and craftsmanship in Gothic architecture. And they especially talked about the, the work, uh, if the work uh, to give their interpretation of the master's instruction, just not just making a copy or mimicking master's uh, work, if you have the interpretation and then uh, have your own work, that's going to have a craftsman's uh, work with enjoyment. On the day seven, uh, we were preparing for the, the symposium coming and with the lectures by professors and specialists in relation to uh, Ruskin thoughts, we came up with more specific questions and be ready uh, for the symposium. This is the pictures uh, from day seven. And between day seven and the symposium, we held big draw in Kyoto, organized by Shokan Nishikawa from Kyoto uh, UNESCO Association. Professor uh, Yokoyama came from Tokyo to give a lecture and introduction of the Ruskin's idea on drawing. And participants were given the instruction to make their own art. And we have this beautiful, uh, piece of art and we had this at the uh, symposium and the picture is going to be coming up in the next slide. So this one is uh, was from the big draw. So we had about 100 people participated at the symposium. We reflected on Ruskin's thoughts once again and discussed a uh, practice that uh, envisage a creative community. We had four sessions, talk one, two, and three, and discussion in the end. And I'd like to give very short summary of main idea of each sessions. 
The first one was on education, and our questions to Professor Yokoyama was if education based on Ruskin's ideology has any possibilities in the era of AI replacing cognitive abilities, and what would those be? Her answer was, when we look at Ruskin's education characteristics at the working men's uh, college, talking to each student and teach them importance to observe things properly, uh, that is uh, the key. And uh, without light, you cannot see the object because of light. We can sense the color and the details brings out the outline. And the next one was a craftsmanship, monozukuri. And our uh, question was to Mr. Shigeki Hattori from Graph. And what kind of hints do the arts and crafts movement and minge uh, give us in terms of the way we work? The key word given in the answer was symbiosis, innovation, and cross-innovation. It is important for designer to have uh, to have perspective beyond just creating good products, we need users and community as an observer to have better uh, products. And also in modern times, people like people's lives and economic activities were divided into small categories but cross innovations might be the hint for the future. Also, Morris's working style might be another hint for craftsmanship for the future. In talk two, our question to uh, our question one question to Mr. Shimuta was about civic economy in Japan. Right now, society is in time of change from the perspective of history of design. We are at a time which has as much impact as the industrial revolution. What Japan especially lacks is the sense of aesthetics because design does not only circulate things, but also the human spirit and mind and social roles, increasing the number of people who have a sense of aesthetics of the physical objects in front of us as well as their instruction, as, as well as their structure and sorry, hum and behavior is important. And also we talked about intrinsic value. When we imagine what the beautiful society and life would be like in 2020 and beyond, Ruskin and Morris give a good references for us. In the next session, we had Professor Uemura, who is a specialist on aesthetic. We asked his thoughts on building restoration and in the seven, uh, in the seven lamps of architecture in 1849, restoration is a lie from beginning to end. Ruskin also criticized, on the other hand, making the same old things repeatedly in modern time, modern painters. Architecture is not something you may you make according to the plan decided in advance. Real architecture grows naturally by many people adding their expression at various times, little by little, so that noble architecture is naturally unfinished and yet to continue to grow. So maybe probably our center, we just renovated this center, but then may maybe in the future, in the coming years, uh, depending on how we use, we may change things and the renovation might uh, happen differently from what we think now. And But then that's maybe a noble idea would be. We also asked Professor Uemura how we could tell the meaning of intangible activities to those who are not participating at the site in the flow of relational art by Nicholas Brio, antagonism and relational aesthetic by Claire Bishop, 
and socially engaged art by Grant Kester. And these participatory art, uh, such as socially engaged art, will be one of the forms of the art practices in the future. So now the symposium was successfully over and Mr. Tsuyuki actually had another issue and uh, he contacted Mr. Yamazaki, which was related to a management of Osaka Ruskin Center and see if he could entrust Mr. Yamazaki with it. Over the years, Mr. Tsuyuki collected books and letters uh, by Ruskin and Morris, but there is no one who would be passed on. If there is no one, the collection would be donated to a public library or private library or uh, somewhere and held separately by Ruskin and Morris or sold to a bookstore. So Mr. Tsuyuki consulted with Mr. Yamazaki and founded Osaka Ruskin Center as a general incorporated foundation in 2019. Now with Mr. Tsuyuki and many other supporters, the Ruskin Yamori Center of Osaka has been utilized for programs and events. Mr. Tsuyuki's collection contains more than hundred, uh, sorry, thousand books and letters related to Ruskin and Morris. In terms of Mr. Tsuyuki's everlasting concerns, he has long been interested in John Ruskin and Morris. Their thoughts and practice have been have made him visit Britain several times to investigate places with him. These collections are results of his interest and research. The collections are first edition of Modern Painters, and I actually have the actual book here, and it's actually very fragile, so you can actually see the pieces, oh my gosh, <laughs> of the book here. So um, I'm not going to take the book, actually, from the, I'm not going to take the book out of the box, but this is the first uh, edition of Modern Painters. And also, Fruit, a uh, book by Lectures on Art by Ruskin. This one. And there is some notes by Ruskin over here. And Ruskin's annotated, annotation copy of the tourist in Spain and Morocco and Ruskin's copy of Life and Adventure of Robinson Crusoe. Uh, this says the Ruskin uh, name over here. And we have Ruskin's copy, ah, uh, sorry. Uh, we have two watercolors by John Ruskin, and one is this one. And also, sorry, I'm gonna move the, the camera a little bit and that one over there. And we have autograph letters uh, and manuscript by uh, Ruskin. And also there are lots of books uh, by and about William Morris as well. And we have slides uh, which were used by May Morris for boxes of slides used as illustrations for May Morris's uh, lectures to Women's Guild of Arts. These are maybe like more like clear picture over here. This is the uh, Modern Painters first edition and watercolor and some of the books that I introduced. Our mission is to preserve and make publicity accessible with the documents related to Raskin and Morris. And also we'd like to uh, uh, be the place where we can learn and research and advocate and practice Raskin and Morris's thoughts. Our collections, uh, such the uh, such books that I just showed you, 
are accessible for visitors. And Mr. Tsuyuki actually encouraged us to read those books by actually holding them in your hands. And of course, those books are very uh, extremely precious. So we ask visitors to handle them with care, extra care. Um, and since we don't have the full list of collections, uh, we are now archiving the collection and our archive team gather together once a month. And I am one of the archive team members actually by uh, but by touching them and having take a look at Ruskin's painting so closely, that's going to give us like more, how can I say, like I feel the energy. <laughs> I don't know if that would <laughs> make sense, but it's it's a privilege uh, for us to just be able to see it so closely. So what we do at the center uh, here, and as I said, we are archiving the collection. And uh, we just renovated our center, as I uh, told you earlier, but uh, our Raskin Center has three buildings and very old Japanese house, more than 100 years old, and warehouse. This was a warehouse and it turned out, uh, turned into a beautiful library and Raskin Center with our collections. And all of these buildings are very old. So we started renovating uh, this past February. The first one was this warehouse. And uh, the team Clapton, he is a uh, Yamaguchi, Mr. Yamaguchi. He's, uh, he's one of the uh, members from the team Clapton. And uh, they are uh, architectural designer and whose motto is do it together, not do it yourself <laughs> do it together so he actually they actually taught us how to use machines and we did all the uh uh you know painting the walls and like nailing and screw using screwdrivers and all that stuff and uh they led us renovation and not only the center staff but friends and acquaintances uh of us all the people from the local community came and help uh, the renovations and this is uh, what we did. I think I showed you earlier too. And we actually used the materials from the building, which was scheduled to be demolished. We actually went to those sites and get those materials. And we wanted to utilize uh, the intrinsic value of the material to revitalize this place. And this is the the whole picture. And, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. okay. And we also have, a, uh, we, we've been holding a book club with Mr. Tsuyuki and to learn about Ruskin and Morris. And we also had a, a book binding workshop here. Uh, we did few workshops in the year of 2020, and one of them was a book binding workshop. The other one was miso, uh, miso paste uh, making workshop too. And uh, the book binding workshop was organized by Miss Madoka Kado and others from Studio L office. This was very popular workshop. And of course, not only you can enjoy the handcrafts, but uh, this will give participants to expose Morris's idea, have nothing in your houses that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. We had a talk event on working style and I talked about how uh, people in Nose chose here to come and live and they can have their own lifestyle here. But we invited guests from the local community of, of Nose and afterwards, how we Ruskin Center can connect with them and utilize our center as a base for the local community. And through uh, YouTube and SNS, we are pre uh, spreading words of what Ruskin Center is doing and advocate thoughts and idea of Ruskin and Morris. And I have a video that I want to show you.
and it's a very uh, short video clip but i'm going to change it to the video so just one second This is the video from us. Thank you very much. And this is it from us. <laughs> you, Google, thank you so much for a uh, for a, such a, uh, a comprehensive look. Uh, <laughs> all, all that you're doing, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, thank you. Comments, questions? Comments. <laughs> Tsuyuki said you should come over here. <laughs> I, I I should have Mr. Tsuyuki's help. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have a few questions, Gabe. Hi, Stuart. Hi, wonderful. It's just wonderful. Makes us feel very badly that we don't have anything like that here. Here we are, Los Angeles, huge city, and we need to have what you have, something <laughs> like it, a Ruskin Center. Fantastic. Anyway, um, we have Gabriel has introduced and, and Sarah Atwood as well the idea of applied Ruskin and Jim Space, of course, the wonderful Jim Space. And what I'm feeling about what we saw here today, your presentation, there's so much applied Ruskin in Japan. The resonance is applied Ruskin. And then it led me to other ideas. And I'm sure that our friend Mikey Simon, who just got back from Japan, will have something to say. And uh, the ideas of, I'd like to know how Ruskin might relate to the concepts in Japanese culture of wabi-sabi and shibui. Wabi-sabi and shibui. Wow, that's a, that's a difficult question. Wabi-sabi to Ruskin no idea wa donna fu ni tsunagatte iru to omaimasu ka? Well, wabi sabi is yeah, wabi sabi is pretty old concept. I think it's uh older than actually uh the arts and crafts movements, but uh yeah. definitely we take the nature very special. We consider the nature is part of our life, and when we think about it, uh. Uh, the Ruskin's idea of intrinsic value, like you will find a value in the material and then make the most use out of it uh, or and be 
together with the material, then maybe wabi sabi is maybe can be translated something like that. That it's uh, you appreciate the intrinsic value and the the material becomes uh, old, but we still appreciate how it looks and appreciate what it gives. I don't know. It's it's my interpretation, but. But that... I think it comes, Gabriel, next, your, your next lecture on rust uh, is uh, so critically related to the notion of beauty and aging, beauty and patina. Hmm. Right. Well, actually, the, the next lecture, uh, Stuart, is on the law of health. But we will be talking about the work of iron in uh, November. But, you know, you're right. Yeah. The, um, all throughout Ruskin, this this concept of the integrity of the material in itself mm -hmm. uh, the truthfulness to to nature and the mm -hmm. truthfulness to material uh, I was struck very much by the uh, 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 the the use of of the materials from demolished buildings in the area mm -hmm. in in the renovation of your center mm -hmm. the uh, classic mm -hmm. application yeah the beautiful imperfections. Mm. Mm -hmm. this place is really um yeah it changed so much <laughs> <laughs> and we enjoy the process of renovation yes. and actually AG stayed in a, at the center for a couple of weeks during the month of february which was very very cold time in nose and uh but <laughs> Did you enjoy this process? Yes. <laughs> he said yes. <laughs> and that was that was very like a uh arts and crafts movement and enjoyment was uh something like we actually went through. It was it was very nice. Is the the uh, is the filmmaker who did the short video is he uh yes. with you? Yes. Yes. Well, he should take a bow. <laughs> oh, it's <was> wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Yoshida san. She is. Ah, bravo. Bravo. Hey. Yoku ganbarimasu. We met him. It's great. Work in a library, so I'm naturally interested in your collection there. And I'm curious. Uh, kind of a two-part question is is most of it in English or is is it a mixture of uh, English and I guess uh, my second part of my question is has Ruskin been, been translated a lot into Japanese and if mm -hmm. so do you know anything about any difficulties in translation as, as I mentioned just before we started I just came from a two-day conference on Lewis Carroll and a it is very difficult to translate Lewis Carroll because uh, he has so many nonsensical words, made up words. Ruskin does not, um, but I, I am curious if the concepts tra uh, translate as well. So a, a couple couple questions there. Right. Well, to, uh, for the first question, we have a mixture of collection like in English and Japanese. And uh, of course we'd like to have a Japanese translation for Ruskin's work. So um, I think we have hotondo arimasu yo ne, hotondo arimasu ne, Ruskin no Nihongo no yaku wa. So for the Ruskin translation, yes, we have the collection. And uh, when we think about the whole collection at the center, excuse me, just one second. Excuse me, I'm over there. These are all uh, Ruskin's translation in Japanese. Mm. And over here, we have English uh, original text. And uh, to answer your question a little bit more details, uh, we have books related to Ruskin and also the, the person who was influenced by Ruskin. So let's say like economics and mm. also like architecture and all that. Uh, we have 
books in Japanese, actually. So in total, I think, or well, for sure, like we have more books in Japanese, but in terms of Ruskin's book, it's maybe like 50 50, mm. I think. Um, and your next question the translation. I have never attempted <laughs> myself to translate, but uh, it was, I'm sure, difficult. And especially earlier times after Meiji, uh, after the Meiji restoration, and we talked about uh, how uh, modern painters was translated and how it was uh, uh, introduced in the Japanese society. And uh, one of the introducer, uh, just one second, I'm trying to uh, remember the name. <laughs> uh, Soga, I do, Tokutomi, so, Soho, Kana. And he translated the book of Ruskin and tried to introduce his idea, I think. And his concept was so difficult because the Western thoughts and philosophy were so new to Japan. So that uh, his translation and his his digest, he actually wrote a digest, and that was very uh, comprehensive. So that it's actually still talked that it was a good introduction mm -hmm. to the society. So nowadays, um, I actually read the uh, Seven Lamps of Architecture uh, in Japanese, and they were more easier to read than the old ones. I mean, in my opinion, yeah. and after translating by many translators, I think translation was get, has been getting more, how can I say, uh, more easier to understand, easier to follow. Mm -hmm. So now that it's getting easier to, uh, understand Ruskin's concept more than it used to be, I think. I don't know if I'm, I'm answering your questions, but... You really did. And I, I assumed that older translations would have been difficult because the concepts he was talking about would have been mm -hmm. pretty foreign to Japan mm -hmm. at the time, you know, right. 120, 30, mm -hmm. 40 years ago, right? Right, right. But because of their translation it is getting easier for us to like work on the Ruskin's ideas and translation so we should really be appreciative <laughs> about older works thank you for your question um curious curiosity in the course of our uh, career we um were asked to appraise and to place uh, some 13th century Spanish ceilings, carved ceilings. I just think somehow this re so, you know, uh, they looked like uh, language, uh, dedications, uh, maybe biblical phrases and so on. But actually, the illiterate, uh, unschooled workers who carved those ceilings uh, had seen uh, language in uh, carved borders of ceilings. But what they did was they created, they recreated the look of the language. So it was actually gibberish. It meant nothing. Wow. And somehow, I don't know why this, why it makes me think of that. This, uh, this conversation about Ruskin and the integrity of materials, but they knew it had to look right, I suppose. That's what I'm trying to say. The other thing I wanted to do was ask if we could see the watercolors, uh, sort of, you could hold them close up to the screen. Maybe, I, is it possible to see the original watercolors you have? That would be great fun for me. Yes. Thank you. Just one second. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> 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 
It's for the earth when we're doing it, but she's showing the Japanese picture. I got that. Oh, what is this? One it's more. Is... It's um, here. Ah, and here. Yeah. Oh, this one. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Which kind? What is this? Uh, uh, Susan, don't, Susan, don't speak because we aren't seeing the uh, watercolors. Oh, you mute yourself, Susan. Can you see the watercolor? Or... There, now we see. Oh. oh. Ah. Beautiful. Uh -huh. yeah. You have yeah. to come mm. and oh, wonderful! See it. <laughs> yes, let's yeah. let's go. Looks like a I, Swiss I will house. Switch one more time. Yeah, I will switch one more time. Just one second. Thank you. And the uh in the mountain. Mountains. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Sorry, like the. Oh, sure. Uh huh. Hmm. 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 A full landscape and houses mm -hmm. and so on. Yep. Mm. Nice. That's nice, the, nice. Um, that, that that's the fall to Schaffhausen. Right, oh. ah. right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> huh. I, it doesn't slip. Does she know that this is recorded? Possibly. Oh yes, you know, you of course know that we're being recorded, yes. and that the nineteen this wonderful website that we've developed. So, so pleased that you your your presentation will be on our website. It's uh, very exciting. Indeed, I'll be nervous, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Ikoko, can, can you yes. uh, the collection in Tokyo? Can you tell us something about it? The library uh, in Tokyo, the Ruskin Library. Uh, what is it? The Ruskin the Library in Tokyo. Tokyo. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, there is a, a library in at the Tokyo Ruskin Library, mm -hmm, right. and you all know, right? And uh, well, Mr. Tsuyuki it has a strong connection with the Ruskin uh, Library in Tokyo. But the younger generation, like we haven't really been in touch with them so much. So mm -hmm. we'd like to, uh, I, I hope that we can be connected more. And, mm. and do, do you know something about the the size of that collection? Uh, actually, I'm not aware of it. Tsuyuki-san, Tokyo no Ruskin Bunko no collection wa do no durai aru ka gozonji desu ka? He he is not sure either. Mm -hmm. I should I should be, but <laughs> I, it's uh, it's uh, yeah I don't actually know so much about it. But sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I'm directing this to Stephen Wildman. Stephen, did you see the collection in Tokyo when you were there? Um, yes, I've been there a few times. Hmm. Um, uh, it's it's it used to be in the Ginza, but I think it's moved, hasn't it? In in recent years. Ginza kara Ginza Ginza And they yeah they they moved they relocated. Hmm. Hmm. There, there there is a catalog that was produced of the. The drawings there are there, there are a handful of drawings and some manuscript material but mm. in last of the generation or two it was maintained as a a library that covers not just ruskin but also british art and literature so there are things that have no specific connection with ruskin in order that it could be a place where um, people could go and uh, students um, to use well, to use what what they have. Um, I don't know if that is still is still the case. Um, I, Mr. Akiyama, if he's still alive, <laughs> um, 
was the director for a very long time, supported by, still by the Mikimoto family. Oh. So, um, um, and I think it is it's now in a building which is associated with the Mikimoto company, but I haven't been there for um, nearly 20 years now. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have to come back to Japan. I can't take long haul flights, I'm afraid. I, oh, just, no. I, have, a, I have a medical mm. one that um, means I won't alas be able to see you again. <laughs> well, we are connected online at least. Yes, that, that's, 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 that, that's the nice thing. Thank you, Ikuko. Um, um, Thank you. It's now nearly half past two. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go to bed, <laughs> or I shall I shall actually yes. fall off the chair. <laughs> thank you, so very thank, much, Stephen. Thank you, Gabriel, and thank you, Stephen. Wonderful. Thank See you. you. And Norio, if you're still there. Yes, he's here. Norio, I'll send you. I'll send you something. But it's been very good to see you again. Bye bye. Bye bye, Stephen. Even yes. Before you go, can you just uh, briefly uh, tell the story of the fireflies? <laughs> um, it was the last time. I think it was twenty fourteen, but at the time of the Burn Jones exhibition, which um, I organised for the. Um, well, Tokyo Shimbun and through um, Artist Inc. And um, Norio very kindly invited me up to see the center. Um, I stayed, I think, for two nights and then one night also in Osaka. But um, at the end of the first night, he uh, said, um, apropos of nothing, really, would I like to see the fireflies? And I thought, well, oh, yes, <laughs> well, why not? Um, I mean, I've only seen glowworms in England, which are not very spectacular. They hide under bushes. You ever see them at all? Uh, and so this was supposed about midnight. <laughs> I think we'd had a glass or two of sake. Um, and we staggered out into the dark. Um, I was following Norio. He had a torch. Um, and I wondered what on earth we were doing. And um, we walked down to his, um, um, it's a kind of rice field, paddy field, isn't there? Um, below the center. And then suddenly the whole of the sky was lit up with hundreds of jumping little green flashing lights. The most extraordinary thing I've ever seen, I think. Um, I thought we might see half a dozen flitting around a bush or something like that. But the place was left and right, wherever you look, with these wonderful things. I don't know how often they come out. I suppose it was the right season. Um, it was just wonderful. I shall never forget that. <laughs> and of course, it's so redolent of Ruskin. Of the, yes. Very the terrible. last paragraph at the end of Priterita, um, talking about the um, fountain in Siena and, and, and the fireflies, and how they shone, how they shone. Uh, it was just wonderful. <laughs> so thank you, Norio, for that. Thank you, Stephen. Bye-bye. 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 It was a nice, very nice story. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when Stephen was telling it to me, he added, as he's looking up into the sky uh, in ecstasy, his, his host reminded him that the, the rice field was full of, full of poisonous snakes. 
<laughs> he said it would have created a tension. <laughs> Oh, that would have been, oh, no. <laughs> well, Professor Kurosawa, thank you so much for this, much. this rich, uh, this rich sharing. We've been um, really looking forward to this. And uh, I'm so... Uh, so happy that you were patient with us as we as we tried to uh, as we tried to uh, to put this together. So it was uh, just uh, just wonderful, um, and it inspires us too uh, the, with your uh, enviable uh, center and the physical plant and the importance of the of the physical the physical headquarters. So uh, it's. Uh, inspiring on on so many different levels uh, i'd like to also thank um uh, our ruskin planning committee Stuart and beverly denenberg and elena karina byrne i think elena has left yeah um for their help in making this event a reality and of course always uh, to katrina lau for her technical wizardry which uh, uh, we always count on um this presentation, um, as Stuart was mentioning, will be posted to our Ruskin Art Club website, uh, our YouTube channel, uh, where you will find more than 75, actually 78, videos of past lectures and events at the Ruskin Art Club. So we're trying to build this as, as you're talking about the various ways in which uh, we want to make all this richness accessible uh, you know, to people. That's part of our our purpose in creating this, this uh, ongoing archive. Um, when you avail yourself of the riches on the YouTube channel, please uh, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. It seems to be meaningful for someone somewhere. Um, and while you're at it, consider becoming a member of the Ruskin Art Club. There are new benefits connected to, to membership, including members only field trips this summer, uh, study sessions and social activities. A couple, very quickly, a couple of things to bring to your notice about next month. Uh, on Sunday, May 7th at 12 noon uh, Pacific Daylight Time, we are co sponsoring with our colleagues at the Ruskin Society of North America a tribute to our dear friend and one of this country's most significant Ruskin scholars, Jim Spates, on the occasion of his 80th birthday. So you'll find more information about that on the website. Uh, on Saturday, May 13th at 10 a.m., this will also be on the website, we're holding one of our periodic Ruskin study sessions. This time we're reflecting on Ruskin's Law of Help chapter from Modern Painters 5. Uh, this will be a single session, uh, members only. And if you're interested, uh, and if that causes you to feel like you should become a member, please do. Uh, email us at info at ruskinartclub.org uh, and we'll send you the link. Finally, on, on May, the 5th, May the 25th, Thursday, May 25th, I'll be giving a lecture on Ruskin's Law of Help at the Telescope Studio downtown, downtown LA. This is an in-person event, uh, a lecture with a reception following. Uh, it will also be live streamed on our YouTube page. And again, more details on the calendar page of the website. Thank you all for coming. And we'll see you next month. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tyson. <laughs>